We've all been told that pensions are important, but why? Most of us have never had pensions explained to us, and yet it's vital to know how pensions work because for most of us, they are the best way to build wealth for the future. If you don't understand pensions, you might miss out on the incredible benefits that they provide for building wealth for you and your family. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew. I'm a chartered financial planner based in the UK and for over 10 years, I've been giving you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. Today, I'm gonna to cover the different types of pension, how you get free money when you save into one, how they are taxed, how they grow and how you get money out at the end. Now, in all the years that I've been advising clients who are enjoying a rich retirement, pretty much every single one of them has paid into a pension. And when we're done here, you will be equipped to make the most of these brilliant plans. So let's dive in. Let's understand the types of pension first. Over the decades, there have been lots of different types, but the first distinction is simple enough. Workplace pensions, which are provided by employers, and personal pensions, which you sort out for yourself. Taking workplace pensions first, there are again two main types, and I'm gonna put one on this side and the other on that side. Firstly, we have defined benefit or DB pensions, where the benefit is a promise of a guaranteed future income one day when you retire. It's a known or defined benefit. Now, the amount of that income will be based on your earnings, the length of time that you're with that employer and in the scheme, and some other calculations which are specific to the scheme that you're in. So if you work for the public sector, like the NHS, police, fire service, teachers, armed forces, or civil service, you're quite likely to be in one of these schemes. But you may also have a DB pension if you've worked for a very big company for a long time. And these are the gold standard of pensions, and they're really valuable, which is why there aren't so many of them around anymore, unless you happen to work for the government. Then over here you have defined contribution or DC pensions, where you build up a pot of money by investing from your salary over the years until you retire. Now how much you get out at the end is unknown. It's the amount of contribution that is known or defined as you go along. How much the pension fund grows to is also a function of how the investments inside the pension perform over time. And we'll get to that in just a minute. So defined benefit and defined contribution, two really important terms to understand. And pretty much everything else will slot into these two types as we go along, okay? But for now, we'll get rid of those graphics. These days in the UK, it's mandatory for employers to provide a pension of some kind, most likely a DC, a defined contribution plan. You will be automatically joined to the scheme if you meet the criteria, but you can opt out. So that's workplace pensions, but what about personal pensions? Personal pensions are always defined contribution. There are no guarantees. It's up to you to save for the future and how much you end up with is a function of how much you put in and how that money grows over time. Just to confuse matters, there are lots of different types of personal pensions. So you might hear of stakeholder pensions, SIPs or private pensions. Those are all different names for pretty much the same thing. Yes, there are some differences, but they don't need to concern us at this point. We're about to get to the good bit, free money. And I'm telling you, this can be worth many tens, even hundreds of thousands of pounds over your working life. This is a really big deal. Okay, how do you get free money with pensions? Well, the free money in this case is called tax relief. And it's one of the biggest reasons to use a pension to save for your future. And as the name suggests, rather than paying tax, you get money added into your pension instead. The government gives you tax back to incentivize you to save for retirement. And it works like this. If you are employed, your payment into your pension is usually taken off your salary before you pay income tax. So if you pay £100 into a pension, all of it actually goes into the pension. But if you took that £100 of salary, though, you would pay income tax on it. If you're paying tax at basic rate, that would be 20%. So you'd actually only get... 80 pounds. Now this is the same 100 pounds we're talking about, but if you pay it into your pension, you get to keep all of it. The 20 pound doesn't go into tax, it goes into your pension. How much better is it that it's in your hands rather than the revenues? Now, if you're not in a workplace pension, maybe you're self-employed and you're saving into your own personal plan, the maths is the same, but it actually feels even better. Because here you pay 80 pounds into your pension, 
and the pension company requests the £20 from the government and it gets added in. Very cool indeed. And if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you can claim another £20 off your tax bill when you do your tax return. So you still have £100 in your pension, but you've actually only spent £60 to put it there. Free money. Here's the best bit though. If you're employed and you're in the workplace pension scheme, your employer has to pay in too. And they will likely match what you put in up to a certain level. So if you're putting in £100, but it's only costing you 80 quid thanks to tax relief, and then your employer puts in £100, well, that's £200 in your pension, but it's only cost you £80 to get to that point. Literally nowhere else will you get this kind of growth on your money overnight. It's ridiculously cool, but we don't shout about this from the rooftops like we should. Let's talk though about how pensions are taxed, because we all know there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? So is the money really free? Well, there is a quid pro quo. Pensions are taxed eventually, but not generally until you take money out. And for some of us, that's often quite a long way into the future. And we'll get to that in just a sec, but it's important to know that pensions grow tax-free too. So as you roll up wealth for the future, there's no tax being taken off it as you go. That's a good thing. Now, if this is useful, let me just mention my courses at Meaningful Academy, and specifically, Meaningful Academy Build Wealth, where we cover all this stuff in much more depth, as well as all the other ways you can build wealth for the future. There, you'll learn how to invest effectively and even get access to an incredible app called Voyant Go, which will help you plan your own financial future. So check out MeaningfulAcademy.com slash BuildWealth for more info. Now back to the main video. Okay, let's talk about how pensions grow. And for this bit, I'm gonna bring back the two graphics to help me explain the differences between defined benefit pensions over here and defined contribution pensions over here. With DB pensions, you pay in and your employer pays in, but you're not building up a pot of money as such. Instead, you are increasing the amount of guaranteed income that you're gonna get one day. And this is called pension accrual. For every year that you're in the scheme, you will increase the amount of income that you are storing away for the future. And also, the income that you've already built up in the pension will rise each year to try and keep pace with inflation. And this is called indexation. And all this happens really without you doing anything except paying into the scheme. You just have to keep working and stay in the scheme. If you do leave the scheme because perhaps you've changed your job, you won't accrue any more pension income but what you've already accrued while you were a member will still get indexed up each year into the future. And you'll get a statement each year showing how that works. With defined contribution pensions, you pay in and your employer, if you have one, also pays in. Plus you get the tax relief. And all of that builds up to a pension fund, a pot of money, which is yours. Now that money will be invested in some way, used to buy shares and bonds and assets which should grow over time. How big that pot becomes is simply a function of how much you pay in over the years and how well the investments perform. I tell you, if you've made it this far, well done. I know this is a potentially dry subject, but it's just so important. So stick with it, we're doing well. Finally, let's talk about how you get your money out of a pension. And how you do that, again, differs between our two kinds of scheme. In defined benefit schemes, you've built up this guaranteed income and you will receive it from whatever the retirement age is of the scheme. And it's just like receiving your salary. It comes in guaranteed every month. You'll even get pay slips and you'll get a P60 at the end of the tax year. And yes, you will pay income tax on it. That's the quid pro quo for the free money earlier on. That's the payback for the free money when you were building up the pension. Now, if you take your pension early, it will be reduced because the scheme has to pay it out to you for longer. If you defer it and take it late, it may be increased whenever you do eventually take it. If you die first and you have a spouse or a partner, there will usually be a smaller income paid to them until they die. Crucially, DB pension incomes almost always increase each year. That's that indexation again. The idea being to keep pace with inflation. Your income goes up because most things get a little bit more expensive each year. You can also give up some of your pension, making your income lower each month in return for a tax-free lump sum right at the start. And this is called commutation. Each scheme is different as to how much lump sum you get for every 100 pounds per year of pension you give up. But it's definitely something to look at as you plan for your retirement. With DC schemes, you end up with a pot of money and you need to decide what to do with that 
when you get to retirement age. Retirement age on DC pensions is 55 now, but that's gonna rise from 2028 so that it becomes 10 years below your state pension age. So if your state pension age is 68, you're gonna be able to take your DC pension from age 58. Now, whatever your pension fund is, you can take one quarter of it out as a tax-free cash lump sum. So that's a useful benefit. So if you've built up a pot of 200,000 pounds, you can take out up to 50,000 pounds tax-free. With the other three quarters of the fund, you can hand it over once and for all to an insurance company in return for a guaranteed income for life, a little bit like a DB scheme. That's called an annuity and it is taxed just like your income from your job. Or you can have your pot and just draw some down each month. Think of it as a bucket with a tap on it. You can just open the tap and draw a bit of money out. You can do it regularly each month or take ad hoc lumps here and there. And this is called drawdown. And whatever you take in this way is again taxed, just like income. So if you take 150 grand out in one year, you're gonna pay a lot of income tax. In drawdown, your pot of money stays invested. And it's up to you, A, to invest it wisely, and B, not draw out so much that it runs out one day. But this is a very flexible way to access your money in retirement. I did a much more detailed video about taking money out of pensions, and I'll link to that up here. But basically, folks, that's it. Yes, there is a ton more detail that we could get into, but this will be a very long video, and you don't want that, and neither do I. But now you have a basic understanding of how pensions work so that you can make the most of them. Let me say it again, I've been an advisor for 23 years and everybody I've worked with who has retired really wealthy has paid into pensions. You could do the same. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, click the like button and subscribe if you're not already so that you can get more where this came from. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.